And I can't think of a better time to make a March Madness bracket. This is crazy. Let's start. Oh my goodness, I'm Max Garcia. Today is Saturday, February 22nd. It's the weekend, and today I'm just relaxing, watching some college basketball and some XFL. Over there, there was a rainbow about 30 minutes ago. My brother is playing some video games, but this morning, my dad and I headed to the Apple Store to replace my battery on my MacBook Pro, and we ran about 35 minutes late to the Apple Store, so they canceled our appointment. So we got this ultra-wide shot, and that was about it. <laughs> And since we are in the month of February, we are getting ever closer to March Madness, the college basketball frenzy. And a funny little thing that my calculus teacher is doing since he's a fan of college basketball, specifically Kansas, we are reviewing for the AP exam. He wants to spice it up a little bit. And since we have a quiz almost every single class on the review topics, he's calling it March Sadness. So it's just a little connection there. I'm like, I appreciate that math term right there with college basketball. But today, since it is February, I want to get a little head start on the March Madness frenzy. So I'm going to make a bracket today after I watch all the college basketball games I'm going to watch today. So first up is Kansas first Baylor. And this matchup is huge in Waco, Texas. I'm really a fan of Kansas basketball because of my teacher. So you got Devin Dotson, Yudoka, Azebuki, Marcus Garrett, Woo, Isaiah Moss. Their team is, is stacked. You got They got so many ways to score. So let's watch these highlights. Kansas got the dub. They're looking like they could just go to the Final Four and then maybe win a national championship. So let's have a little intermission before we watch other college basketball. So before we watch more college basketball, I gotta say, I think I'm becoming a vegan. And the only reason for that is because I really wanna get good at cross country. So I'm running almost every day now. So I ran five miles today. And also my cross country coach is vegan. So he kind of put that influence on me. So tonight I'm just eating kind of like tacos with mushrooms and rice and beans and that's it. First day of being vegan, check mark. And I honestly don't think it's gonna be that hard. Like I think the hardest part is that I can't eat cheese. I mean, I only drink water, so I don't drink milk or soda. So straight water is fine for me. And I gotta say, I like the advantages of being vegan. Not only are you helping the environment, uh, by the way, I drive an electric car, so that's a strong stance on my part. And also, I have a far less chance of getting cancer. So uh, that's cool. Let's get back into the college basketball action. Next up is San Diego State, who is the only Division I undefeated team. And I've yet to watch them play, so let's do that. UNLV looking for the upset. Get denied over here. We're going to overtime, and then we got San Diego State on our little app And that's interesting. Let's just roll an OB top and highlight dunk the windmill one because I think he's honestly one of the best college basketball players this season. Because I watched him play, he's impressive. All right, back to the hat. Let's go! UNLV is winning by 12 at halftime. Get the upset. One more label try to stop me. It's gonna be some dread niggas in your lobby.
Oh my gosh, a 16 seed just beat a 1 seed UNLV with a record around 500 just beat the last undefeated Division I basketball team, San Diego State. They were 26 and 0, now they're 26 and 1. And what's really interesting is that this is the first game I watched San Diego State, and in the games I've watched them play, they're 0 and 1. Definitely not even close to a 1 seed in the brackets. So let's see how that plays out in my results later today. But now it's Gonzaga's. I don't know if I should watch the Gonzaga's or the Zags or this Oregon Arizona game. You know what? I'll watch both games. So I'm going to record this game while I'm watching Oregon versus Arizona with Peyton Pritchard. He was like a star in like last year's March Madness. College basketball! Hey, Peyton Pritchard! <laughs> this guy. This guy's a classic. Two big upsets so far today. Let's see if that continues with maybe Oregon falling or maybe Gonzaga. We'll see. Oregon got the dub. Peyton Pritchard is a straight baller. Now, I got two games to watch because I got him on the DVR. And I gotta say, the Xfinity DVR is so annoying because if you're trying to record two games or shows at a time, you can't change the channel off of what is DVRing. If you do one DVR, then you could change the channel and watch whatever you want. But it should be like at least like five simultaneous DVRs because we're in 2020 and the software so old. I have my team, I have my country, I have everything. Yudoka! And the worst software ever. I am so gonna switch to YouTube TV once the Xfinity contract expires in June because YouTube TV for $50 is just so much better than this. Come on, just software updates. How hard is that? Even Tesla, a car, does that. How does a cable box not do it? Anyways, let's watch Vernon Carey Jr. and Trey Jones. That is wild. All one, two, and four fell today in college basketball. Let's hope those results don't uh, kind of change my bracket that I'm going to make right now. It's 2 a.m. on a Saturday right now, and I can't think of a better time to make a March Madness bracket. This is crazy. Let's start with the South region. Actually, just turn on the studio light. Yeah, it's much better. So starting off, we have Baylor versus either Prairie View or Norfolk State. And Baylor has Matthew Meyer. The other team doesn't. So obviously, Bay Baylor is going to move on. But Matthew Meyer is like such a meme. He's just one of my favorite players. And then we have Illinois versus Florida. I haven't watched either of these teams play, but Illinois just beat Penn State. So I'll move them on. Michigan State versus Liberty. I'm going to take Cassius Winston. And then we got Colorado versus Stephen F. Austin. Stephen F. Austin only has like three losses, and Colorado lost today. So I'm going to put Stephen F. Austin. Not to mention they beat Duke earlier this year. Then we got Iowa versus USC. Uh, I'll put Iowa. I haven't watched too much Big Ten yet, but I will. Creighton, for sure, moving on. Big East is tough. Then we got Michigan versus Virginia. I'm going to go with Michigan. 
Got to trust in the Big Ten on Dayton. Dayton's one of my favorite teams right now. Then moving on to the East region where we have the one seed in San Diego State. We'll see how long that lasts since today they lost. So San Diego State's going to beat the 16 seed because that's not going to happen for a while. <clears throat> UMBC versus Virginia. Texas Tech versus St. Mary's. I'm going to go with Texas Tech even though they're not the same team that they were last year. Then we have Arizona versus Richmond or Indiana. Arizona look good today. They're a little bit too young for my liking, but they could go on to the round of 32. And then this matchup is like the easiest one ever. Villanova versus Vermont. I really like Galepsi and Bay out of Villanova. So they're going to move on. Then we have Marquette versus East Tennessee State. I don't trust any team that relies on their score to put up 38 points and they still lose. So we have East Tennessee State moving on. Florida State versus Colgate. So my future school is a three seed according to Joe Lenardi right now. And they don't really have like a leading score, but they just have a lot of depth. So they're going to move on to the round of 32. Next up is Houston versus Arizona State. Arizona State is on the rise, so I'll put them in. And Houston just lost to Memphis today. And then we have Maryland versus Little Rock. All right, Maryland. This takes forever to fill out a bracket, but it's fun. So we go to the Midwest region, Kansas versus Radford. Yet again, uh, Yudoka Azabuki, Devin Dotson, and Marcus Garrett. And that's moving on to the round of 32, LSU versus Rhode Island. Rhode Island lost by like 30 to Davidson. I watched that game. It was, no, not Davidson. Um, They lost by 30 to Dayton. So that was embarrassing. Moving on with LSU. Uh, Oregon or anyone else. Uh, Peyton Pritchard's moving on. Penn State versus North Texas. Penn State's moving on. Butler or Cincinnati, one of my favorite teams is Butler. I really like their point guard Baldwin. I think he's a senior. And they also got a three-point specialist in Sean McDermott. So Butler's moving on. Then we have Kentucky versus Wright State. I don't know who Wright State is, so Kentucky. Then we have Wisconsin versus Oklahoma. These 7-10s are always dicey. And we go with Oklahoma since the Big 12 is oof, it's rough this year. Got It's very top-heavy. Duke versus Montana. Yeah, Duke with Trey Jones. He's got a little bit more experience under his belt. He's moving on. Gonzaga versus anyone in the first round. It's going to be Gonzaga. Uh, Rutgers and Xavier. I'm going to go with Xavier. Got to represent that Big East. Auburn versus Yale. I want to pick... Yale, but Auburn's pretty good. They got the experience of last year, too. West Virginia versus Akron. West Virginia, they're a four seed right now, but they are literally the worst team that has a 10 seed or lower in this tournament. So I'm picking Akron. I don't trust in West Virginia at all. They look horrible every time I watch them. Ohio State versus Northern Illinois. I'll go with... You know what? I'll go with Northern Illinois. Northern Iowa, not Illinois. Uh, Louisville versus New Mexico State. Louisville is always like very good or very bad, but they're going to move on. And then we have BYU versus Wichita State. BYU surely did impress me today. And since the two seed is Seton Hall, they might move on more than just past the round of 32. All right, so now round of 32, we're going to the South region. Baylor versus Illinois. Uh, Jared Butler is going to destroy in that potential matchup. Michigan State versus Stephen F. Austin. Yeah, Michigan State would also destroy. Iowa versus Creighton. I think that's pretty simple. Gotta go with Creighton. 
And then they didn't verse anybody. They didn't all the way. OB Toppin. All right, here we go. Here's where it gets interesting. San Diego State versus Texas Tech. And I, I trust San Diego State, even though they just lost to UNLV. Arizona versus Villanova. Got to go with Villanova. Galepsi and Bay. That guard duo. Oof, it's going to get them far. East Tennessee State versus Florida State. So far, it's just been chalk going in to the Sweet 16. Ah, do I want to pick East Tennessee State even though I haven't watched them yet? No, I'm not. I'm going to pick Florida. FSU. Arizona State versus Maryland. I'm going to pick Maryland. I have yet to watch them. So, so far, it's just chalk. But going into the West, I think it could get a little bit more spicier here. We got Gonzaga up top. Auburn versus Akron. And we go with Auburn. Louisville here. And then I'm going to have BYU beating Seton Hall. And then let's go up to the Midwest region. Kansas is going to go on to the Sweet 16. Oregon versus Penn State. I'm going to go with Oregon. Peyton Pitchard. Then we have Butler versus Kentucky. This is just... If Butler was facing any other three seed, I would pick Butler over that three seed. But Kentucky's got that center that's pretty good. And Tyrese Maxey. So I'll pick Kentucky. Then I'll go with Duke. So now we're in the Sweet 16. Who's dancing on? Baylor versus Michigan State. I'm going to go with Baylor. They looked impressive today, even though they lost Creighton versus Dayton. I really do trust in Dayton. San Diego versus Villanova. I'm going to take Villanova. FSU versus Maryland. I'm going to go with Maryland. Move on to the West. Louisville versus BYU. BYU has a favorable turnout so far in this little bracket. Gonzaga versus Auburn. I'm going to go with Auburn. Then moving on to the Midwest. Kentucky versus Duke. I'm going to go with Kentucky. I don't trust Duke too much, honestly. And then up there we have Kansas versus Oregon. This is going to be a good game if this ever happens, but you got to go with Kansas. So now we're in the Elite Eight. Can't make eight fingers. So we have Baylor versus Dayton. I think this is where Dayton takes over. Going down to the east, Villanova versus Maryland. I'm going to go with Villanova. And then in the West, Auburn versus BYU. I can't believe Auburn might potentially go to the Final Four again. But you know what? From what I saw today, and if they go against all these matchups, BYU has a great chance to do it. Then going to the Midwest, we have Kansas. So we have a two seed, a four seed, a one seed, and then a seven seed. So Dayton versus Villanova. I'm going to go with mm, Dayton. I think Villanova's luck has ran out. And then Kansas versus BYU. Oh, that'll be a spicy game. But Kansas is moving on. And then I'm going to crown the champs. And that's going to be Kansas Jayhawks. Woo! So zooming out to the whole bracket now filled out. That's my bracket. I got some upsets here and there. Not too many. It's some good amount of chalk and upsets. So we'll see how much the seed lines change up until Selection Sunday. But I'm confident in what I got here. And we'll see back in March what this turns into. All right. Peace. Mushroom is going to be considered your state. Ooh. So it's, you make it a little bowl of black beans. 
mushrooms and rice, really. Okay? Until I can get better at this. That seems good to me.